Hello everyone, Michael back from another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up and use a flexible gallery in Power Apps. If you enjoy Power Apps, Power Automate, Team, SharePoint, Power BI videos, feel free to subscribe because I'll be putting out more videos in those areas. And now for my intro. All right, so you want to set up a flexible gallery. Most of the time you want to do this if you're using a larger sets of data. So while I'm talking about that, it could be like multiple lines of text. So if you look at these data fields, they have a lot of text in them. And with the regular galleries, it's hard to kind of structure it to where it scales with those, with those data fields. It's usually a fixed uh, template size you have on those. But with the flexible gallery, you can actually, it will actually scale it to whatever the longest data field is in that gallery. So the data source I'll be working with is my employee data SharePoint list. And I have pretty much two long multiple lines of text columns. So that's the note and that's the manager's note. I purposely made it to where some of the notes are longer, some are shorter and uh, vice versa. And some don't have it. So I'm going to show you how to create something like this. And as you can see, it scales with it. So let's go ahead and make a new screen and we will start this from scratch. So let's go ahead and change the background fill because I don't like gray. We'll just choose something else. So under screen four color, we'll just choose L is blue. Uh, that's a pretty nice color. So we'll stick with that. If you don't like L is blue, you can always use white. So let's go ahead and start creating our titles at the top for the gallery. It's nice to do this and it's a clean look. So I recommend doing it. And to do that, we're just gonna make Four labels so I have four depending on the amount of labels you have uh, you might have to scale it differently but I'm going to just do four data labels and I'm going to set the X Y and width for all of these so if you're kind of new to power apps this will be a nice little tips and tricks kind of video all right so for the X on the first data field we're going to do zero because I want it on the left hand most side of the screen for the Y I want it to be zero as well because I want it directly at the top and for the text, we're going to do my first data field, which is the first name. And let's go ahead and make the size a little bit bigger. We'll do 26, not six, 26. And we will make the bold and let's go ahead and make the width 25% of the screen. And this is because I have four fields. So 25% times four is one. And that will scale perfectly. So the width is going to be parent dot width times 0.25 so that scales it to 25 percent of the screen and i will text align in the center and let's go ahead and rename the label down below so label and we will do first name if i haven't used it before i'm already using it so let's go ahead and do a screen for first name label i have not used that yet i have a ton of screens so being used somewhere else so screen four let's just do s4 make it a little cleaner s4 first name label and let's go ahead and copy this and paste it and we'll reorder the we, <laughs> we will reorder the send to back and we'll go ahead and change this to last name because that's the next one i'm using and we will get rid of the underscore one so let's go ahead and go ahead and put this to where we want to have it on the screen and that will be set the X to S4 first name label dot. Actually, we can just do width on this one because the X on the first name label is zero. So if I added that, if I added the S4 first name underscore label dot X, it would just be zero. So I don't need to do that. And let's go ahead and set the Y to zero because I want it to be directly at the top of the screen. And let's go ahead and paste this again, reorder, send it back. And now we wanna do the notes and that's my first multiple line of text. So we have note and let's go ahead and get rid of the underscore one. So again, we're just changing the text and we need to change the X value, which is S4 last name label. Uh, x so we do need that x value and then we need s4 last name label dot width so that'll place it directly at the end of last name 
and let's just go ahead and change the y to zero so now it's at the top and we need to do one more which is manager note so let's go ahead and change rename this because it's very beneficial to have clean components clean label components because if you don't it can get real messy really quick and you don't want that to happen a manager note for the text and for the x we need to change this to a note because we want this to follow note so note and that covers the whole top bar and that's because the width is parent dot width times 0.25 0.25 times 4 is 1. All right, so let's go ahead and, and, and go ahead and add a border to this to make it a little bit cleaner. So on the left hand side above my webcam frame, I'm going to set the border to 1 and let's go ahead and change this to black. So now we have a border at the top. Now uh, let's actually make this a little bit bigger. So I'm just highlighting all four of them and to do that you hold down control and click on all of them. And you can change the all the properties at once. So on the height on the right hand side, I'm just going to change this to 60. So it's a little bit bigger on my screen. And let's go ahead and start making the flexible gallery. So for the flexible gallery, I'm going to go to insert and type in flexible height gallery. I'm not going to do blank one. I kind of want it to have some components already in it. So for my data source, I am using the employee data. All right, so I popped in the middle of the screen. Let's go ahead and send this to the back because I like to keep my things in order. So this is gallery seven. So let's go ahead and properly place this on the screen. So we need to change the X and Y value. So for the X value, this will be, I could do 60 because that's, oh, not 60. I was thinking the Y value. So for the X value, it needs to span across the whole screen. So let's just do parent.width. Actually, x is zero. What am I doing? The width is going to be parent dot width, and the x is going to be zero because we want it to start at the left hand most of the screen. And for the y, we could do sixty because we know our label is sixty. But if I change the label height later down the line, I want it to automatically scale to it. So let's go ahead and do s four first name label dot y. Actually, dot height. Because the height is 60 and the y is 0 for that. So now we have it taking up, a, it looks around 3 fourths of our screen. So let's go ahead and make this scale all the way to the bottom. And that will be using the height property. So for the height, I want to do the parent dot height minus the S4 first name label dot height because I don't want it to extend off the screen. I want it to stay on the screen. So that will be parent dot height minus s4 first name label dot height and as you can see it fits this top bar will go away it fits perfectly on the screen so we have the titles at the top and then we have a gallery and now we need to start working on the data fields let's go ahead and remove we can go ahead and remove all this stuff actually but you can do the blank gallery if you want to i don't know why i did that but we do have the flexible gallery just make sure you did choose for the insert the flexible height gallery or the blank flexible height gallery all right so let's go ahead and start including some of our data labels so just click on your gallery and then you want to click on this pencil because you want to edit inside the gallery if i added a label and i didn't click on, click on that it would go Underneath, I want it to go inside the gallery. So let's go ahead and click on the gallery seven, click on the pencil and text label. So we have label six. Let's go ahead and name this S4 first name details. And let's go ahead and set these properties. So I want it to be zero because I want to be at the left hand most side of the screen. And I want the Y to be zero because I want it at the top. And let's go ahead and set the width to the label width at the top. So it's S4, first name, label, uh, width. So it's going to be the same width as our label. So if we change the label size later down the line, maybe we have to include some more columns. 
it'll automatically scale these to that. So that's why you want to do that. And let's go ahead and just make this font a little bit bigger so it's easier to see for y'all. Okay. And as you can see, I'm holding down Alt right now. So Alt actually takes you into the preview layout mode. So all those are scaling up right now because it's a flexible gallery and it's looking at what the height of what I have in that label is and it's putting the other ones directly underneath it. So let's go ahead and make the other labels. So let's go ahead and just copy. I'm just copied and pasted the first name details and I'm just going to reorder this sent it back. And let's go ahead and rename this to last name. Remove the underscore one and let's place this directly underneath the last name title. So that will be S4 last name label dot X. Because that X is right there and we need to move this Y value to zero. And let's go ahead and change the text to last name. So now we have the first name and last name and let's just look at the width. Go ahead and change this width from first name to last name just in case I decide to change these fields, the different widths of all of them. So now we need to get the notes and we need to get the manager notes. So I'm just copying the last name details and I'm going to reorder, send it back. And let's go ahead and change this label. Uh, it's a lot of you know manual work to get this gallery set up and but most of the time the power apps is figuring out the front end stuff and the back end could take a long time too, depending on how complicated your app is. If you're working on multiple collections and multiple data sources. Sometimes the back end could take a lot more and it could get pretty confusing. So for this X value, we want to change this to S4 note label, change the Y value to zero. And we want to change the width from S4 last name to notes. Or note and let's go ahead and change the text to note so now uh, this is a giant data field so it doesn't seem like the auto heights on so I'm just going to turn the auto height for all these on right now so auto height is going to automatically scale that height for these data labels so if I click down alt right now as you can see it's kind of cutting off the the whole text because these are a lot more longer. If I click on auto height, it's going to dynamically scale that height. So you can see all the details now and it looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and include the manager notes. So I'm just copying the notes component and reordering send to back. And let's go ahead and change the label name, manager note details. And let's go ahead and change this text to manager note, manager note. And this one is pretty long. <laughs> so for the X value, we want to do manage your note. And for the Y value, we want this to be zero. And it looks like it's already scaling the auto height to on. So if I go to preview the app, we now have our data fields dynamically scaling with each other. So we can actually see all the data for each of the fields. Some of the data has, um, some of the fields has data, some don't. Yeah, that's how you do it. And for the last thing I'm going to show you, I'm going to add separators in between these so you guys can see when this actually separates because now it's kind of hard to look at. But if you had a separator at the bottom, it'll be a pretty clean look. So we go to insert and then let's go ahead and include a rectangle. And let's go ahead and reorder this on the back. And we will rename this S4 separator. So we have our separator. So let's go ahead and make this height one because we want it to be really small, just a thin line. Uh, if you want it bigger, you can make it bigger. But for the width, we want this to be parent dot width because we want it to go all the way across the screen. And we need to set the X to zero. So it's at the left hand most of the screen. Now you can see it's just kind of sitting here and that's because we need to set the Y property. And we want to get the longest the longest data field that we have. So in this case, it would be the manager note, but in 
these other cases, it would be the regular note because that regular note is actually longer than the manager note. So we need to, so we need to dynamically scale this to the correct height. And to do this, we're going to use the max function. So we're going to do max and we're going to do this item dot manager note dot actually it would be max and we'll be using the actual component so s4 manager note details dot height and let's go ahead and do the note so note details dot height so it's going to take the longer one of these two but in some cases i don't have a note for those two so it's not going to look correct and I'll show you that right here. So as you can see for Chris and Leslie, there's no notes for that. So it's going to be like zero. So we need to actually add the S4 first name as well. So first name, details, dot height. And then if you want to do last name, if they didn't have a first name, but everyone's got a first name, so I don't need to do this. Uh, you can add last name as well. So as you can see, we have our flexible gallery with the separators. Everything is looking nice and clean. We can see all the data and that's a pretty easy way to uh, use flexible galleries. And I'm just going to show you real quick the, if you didn't use a flexible gallery, so I already made that in my gallery six, I think gallery five is a flexible gallery. So I'm going to hide this in the visible property. And let's go ahead and show the regular gallery. So for the regular gallery, um, it doesn't scale. I just have the regular note here. I don't have any first name or last name. I just have the regular note. And as you can see, it doesn't scale uh, with the with the length of that data field. It just scales to whatever I have the height set to. So for the template size, it's 300. If I set this to 200, it kind of like overlaps and stuff. So it's not really too clean, but using the flexible gallery, uh, it's pretty clean. So. Hope you guys enjoyed the video about how to use and set up a flexible gallery. If you like the video, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. If you found a good tip in this one, leave a like. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below, and I will catch you in the next video.